Hello and welcome to Skitty Animate. I'm Skitty and today I'm going to teach you a little bit about camera basics. First things first, we're going to go to the Create tab and we're going to create our camera. And that camera is going to be like everything else and start at the origin point of the grid. So we can pull that back and scale it up so that we can see it a little better. Now in order to see what we're working with, I'm going to go over to my second panel and I'm going to hit Panels, Perspective, Camera 2. Now that's the camera that we just created. The first thing that I do after I create a camera is I go to the View tab, Camera Settings, and turn on the Resolution Gate. This ensures that we know exactly where the camera is going to crop. I'm going to go back to the View tab, Camera Settings, and hit the Safe Action. That way I know that if I keep all of my animation inside of this smaller square, no matter what monitor or TV it is played on, it will be visible. And the last thing that I do, just to make sure that I see everything possible, I go back to the View tab, Camera Settings, and hit Overscan. Now I have the exact view of what my camera looks like. Now if we go back to our perspective view and click on the camera, we can start setting up what it is that we like. Now something to keep in mind when you're setting up your camera is not to crop your characters at any of their joints. You're not going to crop them at the ankles, the knees, exactly on the hips, you don't want to cut off their wrists, elbows, shoulders, or neck. So if I pull this camera back, give it a nicer angle, and crop it right at her knees, it looks worse than if I was to zoom it in and have it right in the middle of the thigh. Instead of cropping at the elbow, you would crop either the middle of the torso or right on the bust area. The next thing to keep in mind is the focal length of your camera. Generally speaking, the closer in your camera is, if you have a, a close-up shot, you're going to want the focal length to be a higher number than if you were to, say, have a full body shot. For a full body shot, I typically keep the focal length somewhere between a 35 and a 45. Generally, I keep it on a 40. This is to prevent the character from looking very warped. And the same thing happens when you do a up-close shot. Notice how I'm cropping the camera on her torso. For a shot this close up, I would typically keep the focal length around a 50. And this prevents the character from looking flat. Next is the screen direction of the character. Say the character is looking off to their right, so screen left. Generally, what you would like to do is give a little bit of extra room on the side that they're looking to, so her right, screen left, to imply that she's looking at something not in view. Over here it makes things look cramped, like we're missing something that we should be seeing. But if we keep it over here, it's a very nice composition and it implies that she's looking at something off screen. The next thing I want to talk about is your Rotate Z. Now, if you have a number on your Rotate Z, this is going to be called a Dutch camera. And typically you want to avoid them unless you're doing a high action shot, maybe a car chase. Then you would put a Dutch on the camera, which is your Rotate Z. But this gets funky really quickly, especially if your character is in an environment. So generally after you set up your camera, just double check your Rotate Z and make sure that it's on zero. The last thing that I do when setting up my camera is I will select it and highlight all of the transforms in the attribute editor and I will right click and hit lock selected. Now what this is going to do is that if I accidentally click over to my camera and rotate, the camera is not going to move. Now if you're worried about accidentally selecting your camera in the viewport and messing around with it when you're manipulating your character, you can select the camera Go to the attribute editor and hit layers and create layer from selected. The layer that it created is layer two. So if we hit this button twice, bring it to the R, that'll be reference. Now it is not selectable anymore. And all you have to do if you wanna be able to select the camera is hit that R again until it's an empty box and you can now use that again. And if you would like to open the transforms again, all you have to do is highlight them, right click, and hit unlock selected. So now you can adjust your camera freely again. That's it for this tutorial. If it helped you at all, please consider giving it a like, subscribing if you want more content like this, and comment below what you would like me to cover next. Anyways guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.